So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph this by plotting points. So let's make a chart. And I usually choose negative 2, negative 1, and then 0. But substituting a 0 into this is not allowed. So I'm going to choose two numbers that are close to 0. So I chose these two zeros because 0 is undefined. And then I go back to my standard set of points. So I'll substitute these x values into the function to get the y. So the first one would be 1 over negative 2, which is negative 1 half. 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. 1 over negative 1 half. That's the same thing as 1 divided by negative 1 half. And that's 1 times negative 2 over 1, which is negative 2. And I've got 1 over 1 half. That's 1 divided by 1 half. 1 times 2 over 1, which is 2. 1 over 1 is 1. 1 over 2 is a half. So now we've got our set of ordered pairs. We're going to plot those ordered pairs. Negative 2 and negative 1 half would be about right here. Negative 1, negative 1 is here. Negative 1 half and negative 2. And we have 1 half and 2. 1, 1 and 2 and a half. So I've plotted these points, and now I want to try to draw a line that connects them. But if you look at this, the six points that are on here don't seem to make uh, an obvious pattern. But then when you go back and you keep in mind about zero being undefined, what that means is that there's no point, there's no ordered pair, there's nothing to plot at that spot. And what that causes is a break in the graph. So if we think of these six points instead of something that we have to connect all together, if we think of them as two separate pieces, then the way to connect them is a little bit more obvious. So if I think of these three points connected, that does have a natural pattern. And these three points connected Sorry about that. So these three points would naturally connect as well. But it's also not really obvious where to go from there. Where do I, I mean, this line doesn't just stop. Where does it, so what I'm saying is this line doesn't just stop. Where should I continue to draw that? So let's think about the x's that are over here. So if I continue to choose larger and larger x's, let's just go one more. If I were to put in a 3, that would give me 1 third. So what's happening is I'm, my, as my x is getting larger and larger, my y is getting smaller and smaller and closer and closer to 0. So the way that we would draw that line is we're getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis, but without ever reaching it because you're never going to reach zero. And this piece of the graph that I'm showing you here demonstrates one of the properties that we're going to focus on 
called a horizontal asymptote. So for this example, as my x is getting larger and larger, and the way we write that is we say that x is approaching infinity, that arrow is approaching, then my y is approaching zero. And so we can say that this graph has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. The other side of this graph kind of has a mirror of what's going on. So on the other side, my y's are getting closer and closer to the x-axis as well. So this other side also demonstrates that property, that horizontal asymptote. But on this side, your x is approaching negative infinity, your y is still approaching zero, and you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Anyone have questions so far? Okay, um, so then we want to know what's happening in the middle. You know, these two graphs have kind of a gap in them. Remember, zero is undefined. So we want to see what's happening in the middle. So I'm focusing on right here. I picked this negative one half and one half to get to be get, getting closer to zero because I couldn't plug in a zero. So what if I wanted to get closer? If I wanted to get closer, I would pick values like negative one third and positive one third. If I substitute those in, I would have one over negative one-third, and that comes out to be negative three. One over one-third, and that comes out to be positive three. So that gives me another ordered pair, one-third and three. And then one-fourth and four, one-fifth and five, so what's happening on this piece is that I'm my as my x is getting closer to zero, my y is approaching infinity, and we kind of have a mirror on the other side. On this side, my x is approaching zero, and my y is approaching negative infinity. And that demonstrates the other type of property I wanted to point out to you guys, uh, property of rational functions, which is called the vertical asymptote. So this demonstrates a vertical asymptote. So on this side, my x is approaching 0. We put a little negative on there to say that it's coming from below zero. And my y is approaching infinity. This tells me that I have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. And this side of the graph, We also demonstrates that vertical asymptote. And on that side, as your x is approaching zero from above zero, your y is approaching infinity. So once again, you have that vertical asymptote at x equals zero.
Use transformations of y equals 1 over x or y equals 1 over x squared to sketch the rational function. Find all intercepts and the equations of all asymptotes. The function that we are trying to graph is f of x equals 1 over x minus 1 minus 4. And we want to graph this using transformations of either 1 over x or 1 over x squared. And the fact that we don't have an x squared or any squared in this function tells me we're going to be using 1 over x. And you can see the x in the denominator is matching the x in the denominator here. So our base function is going to be y equals 1 over x. And it's important for us to recognize what the graph of this function is first to help us understand how it's transformed. So what I know about this graph is that um, it is undefined at 0, and it has a vertical asymptote at 0, x equals 0. And it also has a horizontal asymptote at 0, that's y equals 0. And then the graph looks like this. So that's what the graph starts off looking like. Now we have two transformations. We have a minus 1 and we have a minus 4. And these transformations, because they're being added and subtracted, are going to be shifts. And one of them is a vertical shift and one of them is a horizontal shift. The way that we tell the difference is when one of them is on the inside and the other is on the outside. So this one here is inside of our fraction, inside of our base. So this one is going to be horizontal. And the minus 4 is happening away from that fraction, and that's outside of the base, and that is vertical. And then we want to know for the horizontal shift, whether it's shifting left or to the right. The minus is to the right. So the graph is going to transform by shifting one unit to the right. And the minus 4 is either up or down, and the fact that it's minus means it's down. We're going to go down 4. So that's how we're going to transform this graph. And the way that I like to think about it is using this point where the two asymptotes cross each other. That's 0, 0. And to perform these two transformations on that anchor point. So we're going to take that anchor point and we're going to shift it to the right one and down four. And that is our new location where the asymptotes will cross each other. So that's going to help me to know that the vertical asymptote is now x equals one. And the horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 4. And then from there, the graph will look just like it did before. It's just got a new location. It's now kind of centered around this point 1, negative 4, instead of centered around 0, 0. So we have our graph. And we have our asymptotes. So the last thing that we need to do is find our intercepts. And just by visually inspecting our graph, you can see that we're going to have an x-intercept around here, so somewhere in between 1 and 2. And we're going to have a y-intercept somewhere around here. But let's find the intercepts algebraically. So remember our function is f of x equals 1 over x minus 1 minus 4. And I'll start off finding the y-intercept by letting x equal 0. 
That's going to give me f of 0 equals 1 over 0 minus 1 minus 4. That's 1 over negative 1 minus 4. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. And so now I can see my line was getting a little off there. But 0, negative 5 is where that y-intercept is. Then let's find the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, we let y equal 0. We're using function notation, so we're letting f of x equal 0. That's 0 equals 1 over x minus 1 minus 4. I'm going to solve this by adding 4 to both sides. That gives 4 equals 1 over x minus 1. I want to solve this by clearing fractions. So I can do that by multiplying both sides by the denominator. So multiply x minus 1 on the right and x minus 1 on the left. So that's going to give 1 equals 4x minus 4 when I do the distributive property. I'll add 4 to both sides. That's going to give 4x equals 5, divide by 4, and x equals 5 over 4. So that would be the x-intercept. Let me zoom out so we can see the whole problem. And we've got the graph, the asymptotes, and the intercepts. Now in this question, we would like to sketch the graph of f of x equals 3 over x minus 3. This, is the fun this function is a rational function, and so there are a lot of features and details that we need to work out before we start drawing the picture. The first thing I'm going to start with is finding the domain. And for a rational function, when we find the domain, we set the denominator equal to 0. This is going to give us any restricted values of the function. So I know that when x is equal to 3, this rational function will be undefined. So I need to exclude it from the domain. So I've drawn the number line with a 3 and an open circle. Open circle notation excludes 3 from the set. And I'm shading the rest of the number line. So this number line represents all real numbers except for 3. I want to represent each one of those intervals. And that would be negative infinity to 3 union with 3 to infinity. So we have this one restricted value of 3, and I want to know what is happening at that restricted value. And there are two possibilities that we look at, and the two possibilities are a vertical asymptote or a whole. We want to figure out which one we have. In order to figure out which one we have, we're going to write the numerator and the denominator in factor form. In this example, they both happen to be in factor form already, so there's nothing to do. Once you've written it in factor form, you want to look for common factors. Common factors are going to tell you if you have holes. In this example, because there are no common factors, there will not be a hole in this graph. So I know that that restricted value of 3 is not a hole in the graph. It will be our other option, which is a vertical asymptote. So I now know that there is a vertical asymptote on this graph at x equals 3. Then you want to determine if you have any horizontal asymptotes for your function. So the way you find horizontal asymptotes 
is to determine the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. You're going to compare them and find um, out the horizontal asymptote from there. In this example, our numerator doesn't have any variables in it, and that means that the degree of that numerator is zero. In the denominator, we have x to the first power. We have a variable to the first power, and that means the degree is one. When we compare these to each other, n is less than m, and if we look at our cases of possibilities for horizontal asymptotes, that's the first case where n is less than m. I apologize, I wrote zero there. n is less than m. And in that case, we have a horizontal asymptote, which is y equals zero. So this particular rational function has a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. It's also helpful to find x and y intercepts. These are important features of the graph. So if I'm looking for an x intercept, I'm gonna let y equal zero. And y in this is f of x because we're writing it in function notation. So we're gonna set f of x equals zero. That's zero equals 3 over x minus 3. I'll solve this equation by clearing fractions. So I'll multiply by x minus 3 on both sides. That's 0 equals 3. That's a false statement. And that means that we have no, um, no x-intercepts for this function. And I'm going to look for a y-intercept. We find y-intercepts by letting x equal 0. So I'll substitute a 0 into the function. That gives 3 over 0 minus 3, 3 over negative 3, which is negative 1. So I have a y-intercept of 0, negative 1. I'm going to put up a grid for us, a coordinate plane, so that we can start to draw the graph. Let me make that just a little bit smaller. So we're going to mark out on this graph where the vertical asymptote is. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. We have a horizontal asymptote that is right on top of the x-axis. That's y equals 0. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3, a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And we have found one ordered pair, and that is 0, negative 1. So right now, I don't feel confident in drawing the graph. So I'd like to choose another point on this graph. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have some ordered pairs on both sides of your vertical asymptote. I already have an ordered pair to the left of that vertical asymptote, so I want to find an ordered pair to the right. So I'm going to choose an x value. I'll choose x equal 4. Substitute it into the function. f of 4 is 3 over 4 minus 3. That's 3 over 1, which is 3. So now I have the ordered pair for 3, which is right here. Now I'm going to use the asymptotes as kind of guide rails on drawing the graph. Your graph will get attracted to those asymptotes. So I'm going to approach the horizontal asymptote and the vertical asymptote using that y-intercept that I found earlier. And I'm going to draw going towards the vertical asymptote and towards the horizontal asymptote using the 0.43 that we just found. So now we have a sketch of this rational function 3 over x minus 3. So on this question, we want to analyze the graph of the rational function r of x equals 
5x plus 5 over 2x plus 4. And we're going to go through several steps in solving this problem. And the first step is to write this function as a single rational expression. And this is already like that. We have one fraction. And then we're going to factor the numerator and denominator. So our numerator has a common factor of 5. I can factor that 5 out to get 5 times x plus 1. And the denominator has a common factor of 2, so I can factor out the 2 to get x plus 2. So um, this rational function, written in factored form, I notice that it doesn't have any common factors. So it's already a reduced rational function. So next we're going to look at the domain of this rational function r of x. And with rational functions, we have one concern, and that is the denominator. The reason why the denominator is a concern is because dividing by 0 is undefined. So with rational expressions that have a variable in the denominator, you have that possibility of creating a zero in the denominator. So to find the domain of the rational function, we're going to take the expression in the denominator, 2 times x plus 2, and we're going to set that equal to zero. Um, I can get rid of that 2 by dividing by 2 on both sides. And I have x plus 2 equals negative, uh, excuse me, 0. And subtract 2 on both sides, and that gives x equals negative 2. So this negative 2, we call this a restricted value. Because that's going to cause the denominator to equal 0 and the expression to be undefined. We need to exclude this restricted value from the domain. Now there are two common ways of writing the domain, and that is an interval notation. And also in set builder notation. So in interval notation, we would think of the real number line as negative infinity to infinity and then take that one value of negative 2 out of the set of real numbers. We're going to write that in two intervals, the interval to the left of negative 2 and the interval to the right. The interval to the left would be negative infinity to negative 2. That's all the numbers that are less than negative 2. And the interval to the right would start with negative 2 and go to infinity. So this would be writing our domain in interval notation. Now with set builder notation, we write curly braces to indicate that we're talking about a set of numbers. And our domain are a set of x values. And those x values can be any real number except for negative 2. So we write this vertical bar. This vertical bar we say it as such that, but behind the vertical bar are any conditions that we put on the numbers in the set. So we only have one rule, and that is that x cannot equal negative 2. Other than that, any other real number can be included in the set. So you can write the domain in interval notation as negative infinity to negative 2 union with negative 2 to infinity, or you can write it in set builder notation as any real number not equal to negative 2. So the next thing that we're going to look at are the intercepts of the graph. We're going to look for x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Usually y-intercepts are a little bit easier to find, so we'll start with that. So to find a y-intercept, we're going to let x equal 0. I'll substitute a 0 into my function r of x. That will give 5 times 0 plus 5 over 2 times 0 plus 4. 
and that leaves me with 5 over 4, and so we have a y-intercept of 0, 5 over 4. Then I want to find the x-intercept. Find the x-intercept, I'm going to let y equal 0, and we don't have a y in the equation because we're using function notation, so we have to keep in mind that r of x is the same thing as y. So we're going to set r of x equal 0. That's going to give us the equation 0 equals 5x plus 5 over 2x plus 4. I'm going to solve this equation by multiplying both sides by the denominator. 2x plus 4 times 0 is 0. And on the right-hand side, multiplying by the denominator cancels out the denominator, leaving me with just 5x plus 5. And I can solve. I'm going to subtract 5 on both sides, giving me 5x equals negative 5. Divide both sides by 5, and I get 5 equals negative 1. So this function, this rational function, has an x-intercept at negative one zero. Now when we studied polynomial functions, we learned about the behavior of x-intercepts. The graph can either cross or touch at the x-intercept. And we determine whether the graph crosses or touches by the multiplicity of that x-intercept or that zero. So what we want to do is we want to determine the behavior of our x-intercept of negative one and we do that by taking a look at our rational function. So this rational function remember is r of x equal to 5x plus 5 over 2x plus 4. We wrote that in factored form as 5 times x plus 1 over 2 times x plus 2. And if we analyze this factor of x plus 1, this factor of x plus 1 is the factor that matches our x-intercept of negative 1. And this factor is only raised to the first power, so that means that that factor has a multiplicity of 1. And because that multiplicity is odd, we know that the graph will cross at that x-intercept. So we know that we have a factor of x plus 1, which has a 0 of negative 1, that 0 has a multiplicity of 1, and because it is an odd number, we know that our x-intercept will cross the x-axis. Our graph, our graph will cross the x-axis at that x-intercept. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look for vertical asymptotes. And when we look for vertical asymptotes, what we do is we keep in mind what we did earlier. So remember earlier we found the domain and we found a restricted value of x equals negative 2. That restricted value is either going to be a vertical asymptote or it's going to be a removable discontinuity. And in shorthand, we usually call these holes in the graph. So when we look at, and I'm, I have this x plus 2 here, shouldn't be there. Um, when we have our rational function in factored form, we can look to see 
that factor, this is the factor that produced the restricted value of negative 2. You're going to look to see if that has a common factor in the numerator. You're going to look to see if um, you have another factor of x plus 2. If you have another factor of x plus 2 in the numerator, you have a removable discontinuity. But if you don't, you have a vertical asymptote. So since our function doesn't have that common factor in the numerator, we know that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. But now that we know that we have a vertical asymptote, we want to know what that looks like. What does that look like on the graph? So we want to determine the behavior of the graph on either side of that vertical asymptote. So when we're thinking about the behavior of a vertical asymptote, we want to keep in mind the definition of a vertical asymptote. With that definition, what we know is that as x approaches that asymptote, in our case negative 2, we know that the y has two choices. Your y's will approach infinity or your y will approach negative infinity. So we really have four scenarios that could happen when we have a vertical asymptote. So you could have your vertical asymptote, let's say at negative 2, and on both sides they go to positive infinity. Or you could have your vertical asymptote at negative 2, and on both sides go to negative infinity. Or you could have them going in opposite directions, so maybe the right goes to positive infinity and the left goes to negative infinity. Or maybe the left goes to infinity and the right goes to negative infinity. So these are the four choices and we need to figure out which one is the behavior near our asymptote. So um, the way we do that is really just with a test value. So we have our rational function, 5x plus 5 over 2x plus 4. And we want to figure out the behavior around negative 2. I'm going to pick a test point on either side of negative 2, like negative 2.1 and negative 1.9, and that's going to tell me the behavior on either side. So let's test that. R of negative 2.1 would be 5 times negative 2.1 plus 5 over 2 times negative 2.1 plus 4. So I'm going to get my calculator. And I've got 5 times negative 2.1. It's going to be a negative 10.5 plus 5. And in the denominator, 2 times 2.1, negative 2.1, would be a negative 4.2 plus 4. And really the important part here is whether it comes out positive or negative. So we've got a negative in the numerator and a negative in the denominator. And negative divided by negative is positive. So now I know, because that came out positive, that on the left-hand side, I'm going to be approaching positive infinity. So then I'll check negative 1.9. So 5 times negative 1.9 plus 5 
for 2 times negative 1.9 plus 4. That's 5 times negative 1.9. That will be a negative 9.5 plus 5. 2 times negative 1.9. That is a negative 3.8 plus 4. And this is going to be a negative over a positive, which gives me a negative. So I know on the other side, it's going to go to negative infinity. So on the right side, it goes to negative infinity. So we figured out that our behavior looks like this one right here. So for the next part, we're going to find the other type of asymptotes, horizontal or oblique asymptotes. And finding these horizontal or oblique asymptotes in an algebra class involves some memorizing of rules. The actual calculations involve an operation called limits, which is usually taught in a calculus class. Um, so we're going to um, take this group of summarized rules that's been created for us to determine the um, asymptotes. So these rules involve the degree. So we need to know the degree of the numerator, which we usually call n. And the degree of this numerator, we have x to the first power, and so we have a degree of 1. This is the degree of the numerator. And then we need to know m, which is the degree of the denominator. And it also is 1, x to the first power. It's a degree of 1. We take the highest power if we have more than one variable there. And we compare them. And one of the comparisons involves them being equal to each other. I typically call this case 2, where n is equal to m. Anytime we have the degree of the numerator equal to the degree of the denominator, we are going to have a horizontal asymptote. And that horizontal asymptote is y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. And the leading coefficients are these coefficients that are attached to the highest degree term. So the horizontal asymptote for this example is y equals 5 over 2. So we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 5 over 2. So the next part involves determining whether we have any points where the graph intersects the horizontal asymptote that we just found. So we want to find where the graph intersects or crosses the horizontal asymptote that we just found. So the graph we're referring to is the graph of 5x plus 5 over 2x plus 4. And the horizontal asymptote that we found is 5 over 2. And if they cross each other or intersect each other, that means they have to be equal to each other. So we can create this equation where you set the function equal to the asymptote that you just found. And that's going to tell you any points where they cross each other or where they equal each other. So I'll solve this equation. I'll do that with cross multiplication. So if we multiply 2 times 5x plus 5 equals 5 times 2x plus 4, we would get 10x plus 10 
equals 10x plus 8. And as you solve this equation, the variables end up canceling each other out, and we get 10 equals 8. This is obviously false. And so that tells me that this is an equation with no solution. So for this particular example, the graph will not cross the horizontal asymptote. It does not cross or intersect the horizontal asymptote. So we're going to put all of this together in order to sketch the graph of our rational function. So I wrote down everything that we figured out. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, a horizontal asymptote at y equals 5 halves. We found both an x-intercept and y-intercept. And if you'll recall, we did find that our graph crosses at that x-intercept. We have a y-intercept at 0, 5 fourths. We know the graph does not cross the horizontal asymptote. So we're going to take all that information and draw a sketch of this graph. So I'll start by putting in the asymptotes and the individual points that we found. So I'm going to make this really big. So let's make this negative 1 and negative 2. We have a vertical asymptote. I'll label it vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Then we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 5 over 2. That's 2 and a half. The horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 and a half or y equals 5 over 2. We have negative 1, 0 as an x-intercept and um, 0 and 5 fourths. 5 fourths, that's going to be 1 and a quarter. So that'll be about right here. We also found that the graph will go to positive infinity on the left and negative infinity on the right. So we know that these two points will connect to each other and on the right of that vertical asymptote it will go to negative infinity. If we continue to follow this line it should approach the horizontal asymptote by definition. And then we also know that the other side of the graph will be, or the other side of the asymptote will go to positive infinity. So this gives us a sketch of our rational function. For this question, we want to identify the coordinates of all removable discontinuities and sketch the graph of the rational function f of x equals x plus 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 3. We want to find all x-intercepts and the equation of all asymptotes. So for our function f of x equal x plus 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 3, we'll start off by looking for the location of any removable discontinuities. So I want to factor the numerator, the numerator is already factored, and factor the denominator. The denominator does factor into x and x, 3 and 1, and I'd have a plus on both of them. And now that it's in factored form, I can see that I do have a common factor. And we could reduce this function even further to become 1 over x plus 3. So because there is a common factor, we know that there is a hole in the graph, or sometimes called a removable discontinuity.
So that common factor that we found is going to tell us the location of where that hole or removable discontinuity is. If I set that factor equal to zero and solve, I know that there will be a hole in the graph at x equals negative one. I can find the y-coordinate of that hole by substituting negative one into this reduced rational function. So if I substitute negative one into that reduced version, that's going to give me one half. So I know that the hole in the graph is going to occur at the point negative one, one half. But then we want to sketch the graph. And as we sketch the graph, we want to find the intercepts and the asymptotes. So let's find the intercepts. I want to find a y-intercept. To find a y-intercept, I let x equal 0. f of 0 equals 0 plus 1. And I'm going to go ahead and use, instead of using the original function, I'm going to use the reduced one because I should get the same values. That's 1 over 0 plus 3. That's 1 third. So I have a y-intercept at 0, 1 third. And then when I look for x-intercepts, I'm going to let y equal 0. So I'm going to set my whole function equal to 0. And you want to make sure you use the reduced one, because otherwise you will get um, an x-intercept that doesn't exist if you uh, use the original function. So make sure you use the reduced. And if I try to solve this, I would clear the denominator by multiplying by x plus 3. It gives me 0 equals 1. And that's a false statement. I don't get any solutions from solving this equation, so there are no x-intercepts. So I found a y-intercept and no x-intercepts. Then I want to find my asymptotes. We have vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. So looking for vertical asymptotes, I want to make sure my function doesn't have any common factors, and I already took care of that. And once there aren't any common factors, I would set the denominator equal to 0 and solve. Get x equals negative 3 as the location of the vertical asymptote. Then I want to look for horizontal asymptotes. And for horizontal asymptotes, you want to look at the degree of the numerator. The degree of the numerator is 0 because there's no variable. The degree of the denominator is 1 because we have a highest power of, of 1 being on our variable x. And because the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, we have the case of the horizontal asymptote being right on top of the x-axis, which is y equals 0. So now I want to use the information that I've gathered to sketch a graph of this rational function. So what we found is that we have a whole or removable discontinuity at the point negative 1 one half, and negative one, one half would be about right here. I'm going to draw it with an open circle. We have a y-intercept at zero, negative three. I'm sorry, that's zero, one third. So that would be about right here. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. 
So I will draw a vertical dashed line at x equals negative 3 for our vertical asymptote. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So I'll sketch right on top of the x-axis a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. And that's all the information I have so far. I want to find a little bit more information, particularly I would like to have a point on the left-hand side of our vertical asymptote so that I would know how to draw the graph, graph on the left-hand side. So I would like to pick a value for x that is less than negative 3. For example, x equals negative 4. If I let x equals negative 4 and I substitute that into my function, that would be 1 over negative 4 plus 3. That's 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So at negative 4, I get negative 1. So as I plotted that last point, I just noticed a mistake that I made in plotting the y-intercept and that whole or removable discontinuity. So if we take a look at the ordered pair for the y-intercept, it's 0 and positive 1 third, and yet I drew that point for the y-intercept below the x-axis. So I've plotted that point in the wrong spot. So let me correct that. I'm going to erase that y-intercept and move it to be above. So that's about one-third. I did the same thing with the hole in the graph. The removable discontinuity should have a y-coordinate of positive one-half, and yet I drew it below the x-axis. So I'm going to correct that. Let's erase and draw that at negative one and positive one-half would be about right here. Let me see if I can do a better job on that. One third. One third should be below one half. Okay, so I've made those corrections. And now I'm going to draw a sketch of the graph. So I'm going to focus in on that point that we plotted just a moment ago right here. That was the ordered pair, negative 4 with a y value of 1. And that point is sort of trapped in between this horizontal and vertical asymptote. So I'm going to draw the graph by approaching those two asymptotes. And then on the other side, I'm going to focus in on that hole in the graph as well as the y-intercept. The hole in the graph and the y-intercept will connect to each other. And then because of the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, um, those will guide me on how to draw the rest of the graph. I want to follow those asymptotes. So from the hole, I'm going up to positive infinity to, to approach that vertical asymptote. And from the y-intercept, I'm following the horizontal asymptote. So we have a sketch of the graph of f of x equals 1, or sorry, x plus 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 3.
Thank you for checking out my videos. Have a great day.